Great. So good evening, everybody. This is the um, January 3rd meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, hereby declare the meeting open. And the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of December 20th. They look great. They look good to me. Seeing as how I wasn't there. I agree. <laughs> but they go agree. back that, you know, they go back two or weeks or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, yeah. It's, it's hard to remember if they, you know, there's anything left out, but it seemed very good. So I move we accept them. Second. I agree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, next item on the agenda is the warrant. So we have three regular warrants and one weird warrant um, for $4.40, but- Wow. The, uh, the accounts payable war warrant is $128,690.47. The payroll warrant is $112,531.80. And the payroll deduction warrant is $28,407.37. A motion to approve those. Any questions about any of them? No, they were good. Yep. Uh, Eric is seconded. I mean, and I'll yep. vote aye. Aye. And I, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. It's unanimous. And then there's an uh, additional uh, approve. Uh, we're being asked to approve an additional warrant, PW, PDW 22-04C um, for $4.40. And um, I, I'm not gonna even ask for an explanation. I'm not gonna ask for You know what that is? I'm not gonna ask for an explanation. It's $4.40. Yeah, right, it is. Um, it's, okay. Just, it's okay. I'll um, second it. The minor yeah. adjustment that had to be made, that's all. Yeah, yes. Yes. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Erica? None. I've been away. Um, so none for me. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I think we, we basically have had that this past week off from most meetings. So thank goodness. Um, Bob, have you had any? Well, a week ago, uh, we were looking to have a joint uh, yep. meeting between the select board and the and the yeah. cable commission, and but we didn't get the approval from Comcast, you know, for our for our, the the most recent version of our uh, um, agreement, and so we uh, we we just had a cable commission meeting without the select board, and it was just to talk about what kinds of things we might do, you know, in case they don't approve it. But uh, we still haven't gotten final approval. And but I'm hoping that by either next week at our at our special meeting that we may have next Monday or the following our regular meeting in two weeks, I will uh, have Comcast approval. It looks like they are moving to approve our most recent version. But I really don't want to well, go over it with the select board until Comcast yeah. has at least accepted it. So, yeah, well, that's that's good, and I'll still say it's not enough, so it doesn't matter. But um. <laughs> and, and feel like somehow or other, you know, they know that. And and, <laughs> and if you remember Bill Solomon, we had a joint yeah. meeting with Bill, and he heard you loud and clear, yeah. and reminds Comcast and Eileen of that every time. Oh. Good. We meet with them that that we would not hesitate to go to the pitchforks and then uh, protest. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I saw I saw the uh, mayor of Springfield refused to sign off on the, his city's agreement. I, I didn't. Mm. He's saying he said, he said it's not enough. It's, it was his guy. I saw that that was his exact quote. I said, hey, that was that's what I said. Well, the problem is we can't negotiate over the cost of Comcast or the programming yeah. of Comcast. And there isn't a lot left after that. We can negotiate over, you know, how much support they give to our public access television. Right. And, you know, very, relatively minor things. We can negotiate. Well, we, I'd like to be negotiating over whether they would give us a, a, a serious senior discount, but they seem quite unwilling to talk about that. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep at it. Keep at it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, and I, I was trying to remember whether, whether I didn't look at my calendar from December because I was just trying to remember whether in the past two weeks there's been any negotiating sessions. I don't think there was. I think the last one was the one that was right before the last meeting. Um, so right here, as, so, the, as the select board is going into its busy season, the Conservation Commission is going into its not busy season. Yeah. So we have had a Conservation Commission meeting. We had a site visit today. It may be our last site visit, you know, for quite a while. So. Well, when I saw I saw all the school stuff kicks in this week. There's a meeting every day the rest of this week, either negotiating the capital committee, uh, budget committee, everything's all happening this week again. So, yay. Um, any public comments, any old business, no new business, um, so a discussion and vote. Well, since the chief is here, let's, let's just move the item up the town, the town voting to accept and approve the agreement for services, um, for accepting funds to help pay for the police training and just we wish it could be more i don't know how i don't know how it's so unfunded but, um, uh basically it looks like it was geared uh for the entire commonwealth uh, my understanding was i've got a meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock too on this but my understanding was they appropriated a million dollars for the entire state hmm. uh, so we all knew how far that was going to go and so the FERCOG is disseminating $75,000 for our, our towns. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the people that are attending fall in the alphabet between A and J. And so they've all got to go through this year by, excuse me, by uh, June 30th. So that's how that money got broken out. We are eligible for a whopping $2,113 to help defer costs of training and office. Yeah, um, we probably paid more for them to put the paperwork together for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little disappointing. Yeah. yeah. But, just, but thank you. Just, just in the salaries. Uh, for putting them through is over four thousand dollars. Never mind the cost of the ammunition or anything else incurred. So we'll get about we'll get about half of the salary back. Well, all right, that's better than I thought, actually. But that's only for one officer. That's for one. Yeah. <laughs> Erica, I don't have any questions. Oh. I mean, that was just randomly raising your hand. Oh, sorry. No, I had I was scratching an itch. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, I mean, I've I've read it over. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty generic. Yeah. Um, doesn't look like we're on a hook for anything other than submitting the bills. Yeah. For getting reimbursed, or actually, they've made. It looks like they may be issuing the money, and then we can just use it yeah that sounds even better yeah all right all right so entertain a motion to approve the agreement of services by and between the town of conway and the FERCOG for accepting the funds to pay for the mandated training yeah i move that we accept the funds sure i'll second it all in favor Hi. Hi. It's unanimous. Thank you, Ken, for doing what you can. Okay. Thank you. Talk yep. to you later. It, it yep. could be like transportation, you know, and transportation. Uh, Un another unfunded mandate? Uh, well, yeah. you, you know, they, they put up some money to help things like, um, uh, you know, FERTA, you know, the FERTA buses or all of the, all of the yeah. PAs and, uh, and, and, 
and 98% of the state funds goes to Boston and the MTA. Yeah. Two percent is split among all of the rest of the whole Commonwealth. Two percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you need me for anything else, Mary? Nope. Nope. We're all good. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, I'm probably leaning too far away for you to hear me. <laughs> we no hear problem. you. Okay. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Bill, I just wanted to mention that it doesn't it just has um, the spot to sign just says uh, here for the municipality. So I'm assuming that that shall be you for the signature. All right. Okay. All right. So I'll put that out for you to sign. All right. So the, so the next is um, a discussion and then a vote about using the ARPA funds to determine revenue, the town's revenue replacement allowance. And the reven that term revenue replacement allowance isn't in the law itself. It's in the interim federal treasury department regulations interpreting the law. Um, so, um, and, and it, it comes to us by way of our, a proposed consultant Tony Roselli, um, who is actually the part of the team, uh, the accounting firm that did last year's audit for the town and does municipal accounting. And um, so, so he's offering his services to the town to do this, these calculations and to otherwise be a person to say yay or nay with regard to specific expenses. But, but the, and, and, you know, in, in general, I guess I, I have a bias against consultants, against the town's hiring of consultants in general. I try to try to push back against that generally just because so often I've been disappointed in the work product at the end. And, um, and, and especially in things like this, when the town is legally relying upon advice or is, you know, if, if we, if the town submits, you know, relies on an expert or a consultant's advice for something like this, um, submitting uh, expense things to the federal government saying, you know, we're, we're using this for federal dollars because of this consultant's advice, you still see that there's, if the consultant's advice is wrong, we can't sue them. So we're still on the, the town is on the hook. And um, that's true. That, that's true, just generally speaking, of any professional services that the town gets. So I try to, I've always tried to avoid that because ultimately they're just giving you an opinion and it, you still, it's still a very much of a buyer beware thing. And um, I've always tried to look for ways around that. Now, that being said, I actually called this gentleman up and I spent a half an hour on the phone with him. And if we are going to use a consultant, this would be the guy. So, um, did this letter come to us unsolicited? I mean, he just kind of out of the blue. No, no. so it came to us. Um, I mean, it to some extent it may have. You know, he 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 has offered his service. He he is he's been retained by like thirty or forty towns in the Boston area, um, like bigger bigger city Arlington, city, you know, actual city kind of places, um, and 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 he noticed that nobody from west of Worcester had ever contacted him about this, so he did a mass mailing. But um, and and Veronique can clue us in on the exact details of all that because she opens that mail, not me. But um, but you know, and, and I know Veronique reached out to him, or he reached out to to her at some point. We do have a reputation in the area as like a well-run, progressive, thoughtfully governed town, um, and so I, often we end up speaking to people like him about things like this before other towns do. So he is our official auditor, Roselli and Clark. So they were reaching out as well to their, the towns that they already service. Um, so does that mean he has access to all of our financial data? Yeah. I mean, he's familiar with it, which is a big head start. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, and as the art, you know, the Conway has gotten 500 and is, is going to be getting five hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars from the art from ARPA, uh, which is a great 
a great thing. And, and, um, one of the, uh, and so one of the main calculations is, is, de is determining a revenue replacement allowance. And Veronica, do you want to walk us through how that calculation is determined? Well, that one, to be honest with you, I don't know how the calculation is determined, but just to explain for folks, what it means is that of the, I think it's 559,000 we will ultimately get, we've gotten half as of now, so it's like 579 or something that we've got in hand of ARPA funds. Um, there are four main categories that you can spend this on. One of them is called revenue replacement, but what that means is if you qualify for this category, you can take out of that whatever amount is considered to be your revenue replacement, that amount out of the 559, the town could then use for almost anything it wishes to. There are a few stipulations. You can't use it for stabilization funds and OPEB and things like that, but that would free up quite a bit of money for things like capital expenditures or you know whatever the town decided. So it's kind of exciting because it gives you it gives us more leeway in, in the long run. Now, you know, whether you know whatever the town decides to do. Um, at least it has, we have more options. If we but what is revenue loss? I, I, I mean, do we have much revenue loss? I thought so, that you've been saying we don't have much revenue loss. So the, the revenue loss is not the common English meaning of revenue loss. Oh, We're talking okay. about the, tre the federal tre treasury department's definition of revenue loss, which is much like a tax definition, a tax code definition. That It's not... It, it is strayed far from standard English translation. Um, so, yeah, but, but basically, I mean, I, I asked a lot about this because the idea of the town being able to spend it um, for, 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 for much of the town budget being able to be declared, uh, yeah, uh, be, being able to be eligible for revenue replacement um, payment and, and base and, and I did a quick run, not a quick. I mean, I was on the phone with him for a half an hour, going through the numbers that I understood, etc. And there's a potential that that number for the town could be as high as three hundred thousand in terms of what the um, what the revenue replacement allowance would be. So, if, if we don't hire a consultant to do this, then who who makes that determination? Is that very well? Then 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 you know we pick up the phone with all the towns that he has done this work for and we get the calculation from them and do it ourselves or or if we just do it ourselves to some extent but basically he you know he, he um every other town that he's ever talked to they you know, he the, the the fee for his thing is two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars at the most and basically nobody even asked him before to put that in writing i was the first one to do that um, so he did send us a thing and he anticipates that it would be the two or three thousand dollar option if, uh, but that, that our stuff is fairly straightforward um, and that it shouldn't be a huge task and that when he says when he says yes or no that we could rely on it even though we can't do so in the legal fashion or we can't make him liable for our losses but but he, he says it's 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 good information so i mean would we be asking mike to do this mike would have an integral part about it because the data is, our our fiscal year is different from the year to year analysis that they do um and so mike would have to sort of shave half a year in each direction and put a package of fiscal information together for us to send off to washington or boston or whoever and we um, would pay Mike to do that. Well, we do pay Mike to do that sort of thing as is. I mean. No, we would pay Mike extra to do this though? I don't know that it would be necessary. I have not discussed it with him yet. Um, I can tell you according to the letter, and again, I apologize for the lateness of you getting these. I was not on my game last week. But if you look at the options, the first one is if the town completes the calculation and then we ask Roselli and Clark to review it, it would be 2000. And the next option is that they do it, it'd be 3000. So basically it's 
for $1,000, we're having them complete the calculation. The feds have put together this, you know, the spreadsheet that you can enter things into, but I'm no accountant and I'm no, you know, financial. Um, so I, I would just personally, I'd love to see somebody else other than myself be responsible. However, they will review it. So, you know, that's, that's your choice. 3,000 seems like a deal to me, but. Uh, well, and you know, if, if, and, and Tony makes sure to, that, that, you know, he's like, let everybody know that the, my, the expense of this consultancy is applicable for ARPA reimbursement. So it would not be a town assessment kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, uh, I was hoping that we would do the calculation ourselves, that maybe we can get somebody to step up and take a look at it, but. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Me, I don't know. I, I can't even. I can't even find my abacus these days. But um, so I, you know, I, I, I don't know what Erica. You do you have an opinion about this? Do you th you think Tony Roselli is the way to go? Well, or, I mean, I. Um... I mean, I, I, I guess I would defer to Veronique if this if she feels like this is something that would otherwise be falling on her and she would prefer to have, um, you know, a consultant take it. I absolutely support that decision. Um, I mean, I, I think I kind of feel the same way that you do about consultants. It's if it's not if it's not something that we absolutely need, um, you know, to to actually perform this task, do we need to spend that money? Yeah. And is it something that we need to decide now? I mean, at what point do we need to, you know, can we can we table this and and it, you know, figure out like we're we're in over our heads and we actually do need help? Well, I sh I should point out, and this didn't come up in our discussion before. You can do this revenue replacement for several different fiscal years throughout ARPA. I think we missed the first one, but we could do it this for this calendar past calendar year and then for the next one, I believe. So. Kind of. I mean, we should at least decide what we want to do. I will say that the main thing that concerns me about ARPA is just um, knowing who's going to say whether or not you're eligible, like who would be looking at this. And if we're going to use this calculation to base a large expenditure on, I would certainly like to make sure that we're covered as what best we can be with um, somebody else's expertise on this, you know, whoever it is you choose to use, um, you know, so, I've, and, and again, since they already have a lot of our financial data and he's been doing this for so many different towns, I feel pretty comfortable about turning it over to them if, if life word so chooses. I worry about turning it over to Mike if we were to talk to Mike. I mean, I don't know how many towns Mike does accounting for, but you know, he's, I'm sure it's many towns. And if all of the towns go to Mike and say, could you do this? You know, I don't see how he'll also accomplish his normal accounting work. Well, I think all he would have to do would be to help provide the data, which pretty much Roselli and Clark would, I think, have on hand. They may just need to ask Mike a few questions. I didn't get the impression from Mr. Roselli that this would be an onerous thing for our town accountants. Um, and, and Mike does two towns. He does, he does us in Buckland. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, if Mike, I, I, I think Mike should do it and not you. And, and if Mike can do it, you know, and then spend 2000 and have him ha have Roselli check it, that would work too. But for another thousand dollars, he's saying he'll do it. Yes, and I would think this would be actually enough outside of the amount of time we get from Mike, which is actually just about eight hours a week, I believe, um, that, that we would probably have to, even if he had the time to devote to this, we probably have to compensate him outside of the first time. Uh, I, I would think so, yeah. 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 So then, you know, is it is it worth it if you want to have Roselli and Clark review his work? For two thousand, after we've already paid him something, or just have Rosalie and Clark do it all for three thousand, unless that's not what you were suggesting. Well, that was what I was suggesting, but 
Yeah. I just don't know how much Mike could take on. And yeah, yeah. that's my only concern. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, I mean, well, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you want do you want me to find out some more information and get back to you for the next meeting? Um, maybe I could flesh out whether or not Mike is even available and um, talk to Mr. Roselli and see how much time he thinks it would take Mike just to, to help. Yeah, us. good idea, actually. Okay, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And, you know, my my my. I mean, I, I, honestly, I, I, the, my thought about this is that, boy, you know, if 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 the town is told that they could use three hundred thousand dollars for almost any any governmental purpose that the town does, the, the the pressure just to apply it to various things and just reduce assessments um, is going to be pretty substantial, you know. So that I would think, I would think, yeah. And I mean, that's why I'm wondering how much money we're talking about. If this is going to be ten thousand dollars, is all we're going to qualify for? No, we're going to. It's we're we're we we'd be qualifying for six figures. It's the question. It's but it's the question of whether it's in the ones or whether it's up or whether it's three. So, um, but but there's a good whatever so okay. three hundred thousand was the number that the back of the back of the envelope calculation of possibilities hmm. so um and and you know he he if he actually he volunteered to come on to the, the select to zoo to follow to dial in um i guess i should have had him i didn't think that there would be this quite this set of questions i thought that this was Pretty straightforward. Sorry, that's. I'm on a run of doing that lately. Um, no, 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 but Veronique, if you could find out, you know, if you could talk to Mike about, you, you know, he must have some feel for what this would take, and 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 if it's just a spreadsheet he has to fill out with some data, that might be very easy for him. Yep, I will do that. All right, so we're tabling that we're tabling that item till next week, next meeting. Great. So next on the agenda is Nelson Shiflett will present ideas on how to increase participation in town meetings. And joining him is Thad Bennett. Welcome, gentlemen. I saw Thad there a minute ago, but I don't see him now. We can see him. Oh, he's okay. muted though. Maybe he's on your next page. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's that blue arrow. All right. Okay. I get it. So, um, Thad, um, just jump in if you will. But um, so this is a an idea that um, I've discussed with a number of people in town about uh, just ways to get more people engaged in 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 town meeting in particular and in the town just in general. Uh, it's it it. it it's, it's obvious to me as I sit at town meetings uh, um, that I'm listening to the same people drone on and on at every single damn meeting and that all of us are getting older, a year older every year, and I don't see many young faces there. And I think, uh, and I think that that's a shame because um, attending a Conway town meeting to me is just an amazing experience. Uh, and I would like to see more people um, you know, engage in, in that, in that endeavor. And the, and the reasons, so the reasons behind this are twofold. One, if you look at uh, news on the national level, and even in our little town on the local level, the last, um, you know, uh, select board uh, election, there's an issue about election integrity, about community involvement, and so on. And I think that that uh, we have the ability to put that to rest in in our little town by just encouraging uh, attendance by a broader cross section of people. So you know we've all been on winning or losing sides of, of various issues at town meeting where we felt like people of the opposing view stacked the town meeting. Okay, they called 
they engaged all their friends and said, come to town meeting, vote in favor of this or vote against this or whatever. That's just the, that's a, just a common situation at the end of every town meeting and particularly or election and particularly something that involves a controversial issue. So I think that getting more people at town meeting will, you know, allow people to have more faith in the judgment, the decisions of the voters of the town. And it's important that the decisions that made a town meeting represent a broader cross-section of people. That means younger people specifically, okay? We just don't have enough young people attending town meeting. Um, at the same time, it might be that by encouraging uh, more people, younger people to attend town meeting, we have an opportunity to avail ourselves of their time and their expertise, whether it's in town committees or various endeavors in the town. So I think that it would be a good idea just to get more people at town meeting. Um, and since all the old people are already there, that just means young people. That's, that's, that's my view. So um, I put together a list and Thad has some things that he would like to probably add to this as well, but I put together a list of just you know, sort of off the cuff uh, ideas. And my view is that um, this, if you guys, the select board, the guys, gals, Erica, uh, would just tell us which of these ideas are not great ideas. I think they're probably all good ideas, but maybe some run, you know, you think, well, this is going to be too complicated or we just don't want to do this. We'll just nix that. Um, but we can do something as simple as putting job sign, putting um, yard signs out in front of people's, you know, on various locations, Waitley Road, Shelburne Falls Road, you know, east and west on 116, and a big sign in front of the, uh, in front of the school. And that in itself will, in, will remind people about upcoming town meeting. Another simple thing would be to put a notice on next door. Another obvious thing would be Conway Currents. Uh, maybe see if we can get um, the recorder to put an article in the paper about, you know, the fact that town meeting is now on Saturday um, and just reminding people of upcoming events, but we could go beyond that. Um, so a couple of ideas off this list and that um, jump in, if you will, uh, interrupt me, uh, but I'm talking about um, getting a group of people to uh, create an email chain, just say forward this email. Um, and so uh, that could be just all of us just reaching out to a few people and say, here's, here's an email, forward it to your friends and neighbors, ask them to come to town meeting. Um, uh, contact. Uh, um, so the, the outreach to the uh, to just people in general then could be just a you know multi-pronged process of just things that people normally do and then there were some other ideas um one thing that i hear from younger folks is well couldn't go to you know saturdays we have the kids have baseball games they have athletics events on on saturdays which is happens to be the day of the town meeting by the way this whole thing I think having town meeting on Saturday is a great opportunity to capitalize on this effort. Okay. If on, on weeknights, people are working, people have to feed their kids, help with homework. It's, it's just problematic. But likewise, I also hear, but conversely, I, I hear that Saturdays are not good because we have baseball games or whatever. So one of us on this, this committee, if you want to call it that, um, Thad and I and a few other people who have expressed interest would reach out to the rec department and say, can you guys schedule the games or practices or whatever after this amount of time or move some of them to Sunday so that it doesn't interfere with town meeting? Um, another thought was to provide childcare. Um, that, you know, we have a lot of different ideas about that, how that might work, but um, I think that that's something that might be realistic and it's something that's been tried in other towns, by the way, or at least one other town. We've done that. We've done that for, yeah. we've done that. I mean, not every year, but we've done that. Um, most years out of the past five or six, really, maybe, maybe not the past couple, but, but huh. maybe the, the parent teacher association, I, and I know they're not as cohesive in the past couple of years as they have been in the past, but they had organized that at, um, and they had 
um, done fundraisers to pay to pay sixth graders as babysitters and whatever. And so, so the school kids were in, in involved in it too. Um, well, that was who was that 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 did that before? The PTO, that, the PTA. That, yeah, the, the PTA. But that's really the school principal that you would talk to about. You know, make, she, okay. she's the, she, you know, she was the one that re, they, they need to be organized and she's the one that does that. So, All right. so, let me, so uh, this is Fayad. I'm going to jump in. So um, I, I knew I've only I've been here. It'll be five years uh, this year in Conway. So like I the first thing I did was join the Friends of the Library. And one of the things I discovered talking to them is, oh, yeah, we used to have child care all the time. And then part of what happens is if I talk to families, I watch walk and they say, oh, I didn't know that. No one's ever told me that. Or I think Conway, a big issue Conway has is there's a lot going on. We suck at marketing. We're just not good about getting the word out. So I, I, I'm hoping what, what got me excited about this from Nelson was this is an opportunity to start looking at a marketing strategy, maybe starting this year, but even a five-year strategy that says, how, you know, how do we get 80, 90% everybody, how do you get 90% of everybody's email? How do you figure out how to um, get information to people? And you can't do it just once. I mean, there's a reason Coca-Cola spends millions of dollars to tell you to drink Coca-Cola over and over and over again. So what's the strategy to hit people verbally, um, in print, uh, creatively, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I'm excited about finding ways to, to, I'll just give you, like, I just Googled Conway Town Meeting. You know what you get told? It's the second Monday of in May. So, so I don't even know when town meeting is. Um, it, you Google it, you get told, you go to the town website, it's the second Monday in May. That's bad. So we, it's, it's a bylaw that was passed last year. To, it's, we changed it to the first Saturday in June. Well, which, is, which this year is the June 4th, I believe. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Uh, and, and you can't tell people just once, oh, by the way, it's June 4th or the first Saturday. So anyway, you get my point. Yeah. And, and where my energy is, is how do I help Conway uh, get this information out? And I, I think we have this incredible opportunity. Uh, as I listened to you before, Phil, one of the things you said is this guy you're hiring as a consultant, that Conway has this reputation of being kind of with it. Yeah, well, let's prove it. Um, and one of the ways would be, you know, what happens if we, I don't know what our turnout was last time, but if we go from the 30% voter turnout to a 70% voter turnout over the course of three years or whatever it is, um, we're gonna be shining stars. So um, Nelson, I know you got some more ideas on your list, uh, but- Well, I, I mean, I, it, just based on what you said, it tells me clearly that the sign that's in front of town hall or the school should be neon flashing sign. Uh, but if that's not practical, how about this? Uh, one of the ideas that a number of people have discussed with a number of people is doing a mailing to every household in town. It could be a prepaid postcard. So it would serve as a reminder. Um, the town meeting is coming up, asking them to attend. Um, and if it looks just on the possibility that maybe, you know, attendance does increase by double as a result of this effort, we kind of need to know that because right now at some town meetings, we have standing room only anyway. So we need to know so that, um, you know, we don't fall our, on our faces and have people show up and can't get in or, you know, whatever. So uh, a postcard mailing going to people uh, where they could respond and say, yes, I will attend. And how many people from the household will attend or whatever? Yes, I need childcare. Um, how many kids, the ages or whatever, and also perhaps on the same postcard, an opportunity to express interest in volunteering for the rec league, the conservation commission, whatever the hell it is that somebody has interest in. Um, that could all be done in one mailing and it would be, it would cost, I'm guessing less, less than a thousand dollars for both put the mailing together, send it out, and then the return postage, if it's postage paid. If you, if you send a mailing out and people have to put a stamp on it, forget it. You're not going to get the response that you're looking for. So um, that could go to everyone in town. 
And it would be a fairly simple process to pull that together. And I'm sure that we could find somebody in this group of people um, who could make that happen. We could submit that to the board and have you guys look it over and see what you think. Um, and then just do Nelson, it. Nelson, about, about four years ago, we did a mailing like what you're talking about to ask people what they wanted in the way of electricity options when we formed the aggregation. And, yeah. and, and we sent out a letter that contained a, a sheet of paper that explained what aggregation is all about and a postcard for you to check off your, you know, what you liked and it came back to the town. And we sent out about 800 of them to the homes in Conway. I forget the number, but it was around there. We got almost 400 of them back. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've talked to Sunderland who did similar surveys and they got 25 back. You, you know, I mean, I don't know why, but people in Conway really responded. I was shocked. So, right. so I, my, I, we can talk a lot about various ideas. What, what I'd like to su suggest is take something like just the postcard idea and start that as create a marketing campaign. I mean, frankly, young people, the postcard ought to lead them to a website that leads them to do all this electronically because young people don't know how to write cursive anymore. So they've got to use their, <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Um, we still teach it. We still teach it. I know. <laughs> thanks be to God. Um, so, but uh, we can generate all kinds of ideas, but organizationally, create a budget, put together a plan, make sure it's paid for. And the great thing is we're talking about six months from now, which is exactly when we should start, because we want to implement this probably about three months from now. You don't just do it once. So anyway, that's... So you know, a couple a couple years ago, I had I remember thinking about this issue, and I believe there was a select board meeting where I proposed that we pay everybody that comes ten dollars. <laughs> um, well, that's an idea. And, no, and, and seriously, or, or specifically, just pay people if it's their first time. You should incentivize people to come to town meeting, whether it's free food or you get one percent off your assessment. I mean, I'm joking. We can't do that. We can't do that. I know. But Erica, I see Erica I, has her hand up. Well, I think, I mean, the other issue with, um, oh, I think I'm, no, I'm not muted. Um, I mean, the other issue with, honestly, with, with town meeting is that it's just, it's, it's ridiculously long and it doesn't have to be. And I think that that could be part of a marketing campaign. There, there are some changes that we could make and then we can market the fact that like, you know, come to town meeting, it's not going to be four hours, you know, it's really only going to be an hour and a half. And I think one simple idea is to put together a basic voter guide, sort of like the Secretary of State does for the, um, for, for the statewide um, elections and ballot issues. Because, I mean, this is what I've noticed at, at town meeting is that, you know, there's a, there's a warrant article and someone gets up and they say, well, what exactly does this mean? If I vote yes, what does it mean? If I vote no, what does it mean? Well, we could have that in a cheat sheet so people don't have to get up and ask those questions. <laughs> and that would, you know, I mean, if you had that right there, then it would just be like the debate. It wouldn't be, you know, the explanation. Um, and I, I think that would, that would, I mean, a lot of the stuff is not controversial. Like they're, like they're not controversial warrant articles, I would say for the most part. And, and, and the time that we spend is the time that people are asking exactly what does this warrant article mean? And I think we can make that very um, obvious in plain English and that would, cut down town meeting time and then we could market that like tell people hey it's really only going to be an hour and a half out of your day you know how many lights yeah and, and i thought about sort of structural reforms too because it's actual bet town meeting best practices is to have two of them every year six months apart where the first one is operating budget and critical like issues and the second one is capital budget and uh and bylaws well uh, actually oh sorry i interrupted no no and but but basically yeah. that that makes for two meetings of an hour to an hour and a half instead of one meeting of three to four hours so actually that's the way that it's worked out most years in the past because we generally need a special town meeting yeah six months down the road anyway so um that's not a that's not a better but i mean so now this um simple idea of just encouraging people to show up you know, shaming them into showing up, <laughs> you know, uh, taking away their excuses not to show up. Now this is morphing into a much bigger, bigger um, uh, endeavor. And and um, well, I, and I see potential problems with that. Um, 
it seems to me that we, we just need to focus on some basic things. Maybe as Thad said, the first year, second year, you know, and then see how it evolves. But, um, you know, if, if, if this becomes, has so many different goals that it becomes unwieldy, um, uh, then we may not accomplish our initial goal. The most important goal is just to engage more people and get more people to attend the meeting. That's, that's all I'm suggesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah I could, uh, whatever, whatever we do here, we would like to have the full support of the select board um, yeah. and, and, and move forward. So um, that, that's, that's my feeling anyway. I mean, I, I think that meeting is so important that if, if it were possible, I would, you know, authorize our police department to physically transport every resident. <laughs> so, use the buses. We can get you to school. There, there you go. I mean, you know, and, and I, I think it's a remarkable thing. I, I think that, that there are some people that go and that they are disappointed because um, that people disagree with each other and, oh, the, the, the clash of opinions and whatever, but that's what that's what it's supposed that's what we're supposed to you know town meeting is where you go to resolve differences of opinion you do it through through counting of hands being raised democracy um, and, yes yeah. and, and it's it, you know the ballot box or the bullet box you know and that's ultimately <laughs> that's we're so much better off that we have this opportunity to resolve our differences in this way and well, so nelson has often said to me you know it's the one place where you, you get to decide where your money goes. Exactly. I mean, uh, so, um, I mean, again, we have to be creative about it. I think Erica's onto something about how do you do town meeting light, but Nelson's also, I mean, this is classic organizational stuff. Somebody comes with an idea, it then grows by 50% to get bigger with all these other ideas around it. And by the end of the time, you're back to the idea plus about 10% because that's what you can actually do. Um, so, yeah. so uh, how do, what, what's the best way to help the select board say, yes, um, is it come back to us with a piece of paper that has a plan on it? Is it to say, here's $5,000, Nelson, you and Thad go make this happen. We'll get, you know, we'll get Ken to arrest anybody who's on the road during Cal meeting. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I, I would say, come back with a plan and let's see what we can do about it. And, but, and I'm okay with funding it too. We've talked about funding additional things. One of the things, you know, we do have resources at our disposal that, that have only been sporadically deployed. And I'm talking about the highway department emergency signs. We have two of them. Um, that you that that you can type in messages and they're I don't know if you remember seeing them now because they're only sporadically deployed but um, but we have two of them and they should be on either side of tr the traffic at the grammar school for a full two weeks beforehand and well, it's maybe not, not it's not maybe just for enough. Yeah. yeah yeah you're right um, and um, they're we, electric we, though they're not they're not neon yeah. but they're electric. <laughs> but, but we also, you know, we also still have maintained good, you know, we, we have a lot of room for, for, for improvement in town meeting numbers. But as you know, I've been to our neighboring towns, town meetings. I went one year, I did the circuit for superintendent evaluation. So I went to them all and, um, and, and we have the, the highest, per, we traditionally have the highest percentage turnout, voter turnout in ours. We have the most civil debate in ours by far by a lot um the bar is pretty low there but we still but we we're, we're, we um we we uh we, you know in the past two years during the middle of a raging infectious pandemic we we still have had uh you know what 150 175 each one each time so um at, when other towns last year had 25 and 30 so we 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 but we should be we should be we should be packing that gym every day every, every time the the seating the the fire department capacity seating capacity is 360 something we should be maxing that out every time so let me um, ask a practical question if yeah. if we decided child care was a great idea 
Would the town pay for child care or do parents have to pay for child care? You know, that's a good question about where that could come in. Um, you know, like ARPA revenue reimbursement, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you just got $300,000. I just, yeah, I, yeah. I heard that. No, seriously, seriously. That's, that's like it. But, but uh, you know, wh whether because that takes place in the school, whether that's a school expense that the town, you know, whatever, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but. Um, so it was done in the past because the friends of the library, the, the women there were going, oh, we always yes. had that. And we often, often the teachers who were not resident in Conway, who have already been cleared through all the, you know, they can do childcare because they've been cleared through all the hoops. Yes, exactly. Um, they, they got paid to come and do the childcare because they were residents of other towns so that the town residents could go to. So there's a, right there, something that we can research in the next 30 days and get an answer to. Um, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to do some work on this. Um, and I'll even, Nelson, I'll be happy to work with you. I mean, I know you're about to go on the road, but we can draft up a little one page. Here are the ideas. I just added the highway signs to it um, and start saying, okay, um, can the town pay for childcare? Uh, how many handlings can we do? Um, can there be a section of the website that as soon as you log on, it says, wow, town meeting or this year town meeting light or, I mean, just start playing with it and keep nudging the powers that be how to make this work. Um, my experience at town meeting is there are about five people who like to have 80% of the airtime. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one of the issues is how do we respectfully allow there to be that debate? Um, but that, that's probably five years down the road. Right. Nelson or Nelson and Thad, have you heard any feedback about the clickers that we had last year? Uh, yes. I mean, we can uh, promote that if you think it's a good idea. Yes. Um, it's Well, I, it, when Erica talked about the length of town meeting and so on, that was the first thing that came into my mind. Um, I like what she said about cheat sheet and, and any ideas that we have to reduce, but I have heard nothing. The very first thing that I thought was the clickers. I mean, that's and I've heard nothing negative about them at all. Nothing. Right. Uh, it's really important that at the beginning of each select, at, at, at the beginning of each uh, town meeting, though, that there be a really good explanation about how they work, so that people are comfortable using them, and so that people have confidence that they can they can make a, a no vote, change it to a yes vote, and then and then change it back again at the last minute because you know that's part of the process. It's their discussion is going on. Oh, I know how I feel. So it's really important that people know that their vote counts um, because I, I did hear some skepticism in the audience, the people around me, but then as the explanation went on and we were doing it, they were going, oh, I, you know, it's okay. So I, I think it's a great thing. So um, uh, my dinner is ready and I want to wrap this up and you hey. guys have a business, I'm sure. So here's a thought. How about if um, Veronique has expressed an interest in this and in just a phone brief, phone conversation that we had. How about if um, individually, for example, Erica, maybe you have some ideas about the cheat sheet or whatever. Let's, Bernie, could you collect, you know, thoughts and ideas and then Thad and I can reach out and we'll put something together in writing and then continue this discussion. Um, I, it's, I would uh, be it's delighted. Time, but uh, it's, it, it'll be here before we know it. So we something we should work on. And even though I'm gonna be away, I have a computer and I have, you know, I can zoom from, uh, you know, anywhere, so. I would be delighted and, and Erica, great minds think alike because when I was starting to picture this year's um, town meeting warrant, I wanted to have something side by side that went with it that explained to people. And I also think, um, well, I need more background on who takes care of the pre-town meeting with the explanations, but I think that would be an excellent place for us to sort of promote, um, you know, because I know part of the reason is to, to try to shorten town meetings so people's questions get answered ahead of time. So I would love to work with you on that and, and be happy. That's, and that's another thing that if we sort of professionalize, like that for, if that, for lack of a better term, that childcare and pre-town meeting, that we've been depending on the good graces of volunteers and, um, that maybe maybe we've outgrown that um, that concept, and that, you know, I mean, at least at least 
for, for pre-town meeting, do we really need to make everybody bring their own baked goods and coffee and things like that? Can not the town do something? Uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, um, well. but it, you know, that the, there, there's a lot, there's a lot that we can do. I, I agree. And I'm glad that there's other people thinking about it because it's the lifeblood of the town, town meeting. So. When's your next select board meeting? Next week. Oh my God. Um, and then the week after and probably every Monday after that for quite a while. Well, no, no wonder nobody wants to be elected to the select board. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, but part of it is the only reason. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know if that you you're a future recruit too, so it's devastating to hear you say that. Um, so, well, well, but, well, yeah, but the you know the um, I, I I'd like to think that 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 we can improve attendance too. Part of the problem too is some of the stuff we have to do. No matter how much lipstick you put on it, it oh. just is never going to be very pretty. And <laughs> and you know the. A bylaw revision, and the, and the bylaw is two thousand words, and like ten words need to be changed because hey, we live in the twenty first century now, and um, and and just the, you feel bad just taking, you think okay, this will only be two or three minutes, it's cut and dry, but just to convey the information about what we're doing and then do it, all of a sudden fifteen minutes went by, and you you've accomplished like Nothing. the most the 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 most. I don't know, procedural of accomplishments, you know, but, but, but a lot had, of that is, I mean, that's why I think we had a voter guide. We could do that ahead of time. So you yeah. wouldn't have to spend 15 minutes explaining why, you know, the different, like, you know, the semantics of, of the, of the sentence. I mean, yeah. I could also the, the pre town meeting could happen at a meeting, but you could also have it for the once a week for the three weeks beforehand, have us have a webinar have a Zoom meeting where people can come and ask questions. And when people get up in town meeting and say, I don't understand this, somebody stands up and says, remember, you had three opportunities and we got a previous meeting. So now you've only got 45 seconds to speak instead <laughs> of, ten. anyway, it's, yeah. it's a process, but how exciting that if we're looking down the road, we can make this more, more efficient, Phil's word, maybe more professional, but also just a little more democratically fun. Um, who wants to be part of dull meetings? So, all right, I'm with Nelson about um, hearing back some ideas. I'm actually probably gonna sit down tomorrow morning and uh, write up the stuff that Nelson and I played with and you know put together a little immediate cheat sheet on uh, ideas. Um, because I think it's helpful to get things moving as you give people something up against which to bounce. So like Erica, yeah. your idea of uh, explanation of the warrants things. Um, I mean, it's a lot of work, but this is the way the world works these days. Conway can do it too. Mm -hmm. Now my dinner is getting cold. So. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your right. dinner, Nelson. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoy Florida. Thank you. Great, great ideas. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank all right, so uh, on the uh, last on the uh, agenda for new business, the discussion and vote about a select board response to Eversource's letter of December 27th, 21. Um, so I put this on the agenda because I got the letter and um, or I asked for it to be put on the agenda. I got the letter and the... Um, it includes the traditional every every couple of year notice from Eversource that they have deemed clearing of the vegetation under their rights of way, um, uh, you know, to be an essential practice. And I think that's why you get the notice because that means that you, that that means that they're going to do it and the town can't stop it. That's a that's a term of art under their licensures. Um, and in this case, you know, I I I, I had sent out the the permit, um, the, the endangered species permit that was granted to Eversource for the work that they had done. It's a 10-year permit granted in 2020, good through 2030 for um, a lot of the land that they're going to be clearing once again, 
we're treating once again. And the, the letter indicates that they do it three ways, mechanical, um, whatever, whatever, and that by herb, by the spraying of herbicide. And so what the reason that I sent the, 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 um, the endangered species permit from the Division of Fish and Wildlife is because it recounts the history of Eversource not complying with the conditions of their own permit. And that's not my language. I mean, if you've read that, right? Did you see the section B um, where it's the, talking about three consecutive years of Eversource not complying with the conditions of the permit, one of which was about spraying the, the taking of threatened resource, 0 0.6 acres of threatened, endangered, native bittersweet, not to be confused with the horrible invasive bittersweet that we know in our gardens, but instead this is like a cute, cuddly native version that, um, but, it's, but basically, you know, I, I thought that it was appropriate in light of the fact that by the terms of their own permit, they have failed to comply with the terms of their permit in the, then, um, that we should ask them to come before us and give us assurances that this time they will comply with the terms of their permit. Um, so I, although the letter is nicer than that, um, hopefully, I don't know whether you agreed, but I tried to be nice. Um, and I, I don't, but, but, but I thought, you know, that we should say something about this, that it shouldn't just, we shouldn't just be taking this information in like that this is their past conduct within the town of Conway and just not say anything and just ignore it, just treat it like it never happened. So, and, and they have the legal right to do uh, under their rights of way, what they're going to do. Um, could we, you know, take it, I, 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 I mean, I don't know what the town could do to stop it if the town wanted to stop it. And I don't, not necessarily in favor, favor of stopping it necessarily because we want there to be reliable power generation. There, the, the provision of electricity is actually life-saving for like dozens of families. Um, well, I, I, personally, I think it's it, it's worth it requesting that they send a representative to the select board meeting to you know to address these issues. I mean, I, I thought it was I thought it was a fine letter. I'm I'm in support of it. Thanks. Robert, any uh, thoughts uh, on this? Uh, I mean, to me, the biggest thing is spraying when they spray as opposed to, um, you know, use mechanical means. And I don't know if we can require them to come in and notify us anywhere they're going to do any spraying, you know, or, or explain to us why that is the best practice. You know, but very pointedly, that as a practice, as opposed to, you know, them getting to just casually choose, choose it. Well, the, and you know, the, the thing that, that, that concerned me of, was in that permit, reciting their history of, of specifically about herbicide spraying and as that being not conforming to their own best practices and their own conditions. And so um, I don't know really what that means, but that's why I asked for somebody that knows about this, these sorts of things from Eversource. And, my, my take on it is that the traditional sort of, um, you know, super line, line person supervisor that they normally send out uh, doesn't have any idea about the endangered species permitting process or what the requirements were from last time around. I mean, because, you know, I, I remember two years ago or three years ago, Bob, when they came to the select board meeting and said, yeah, we're going to be spraying. We're doing this through all the towns. You know, then it wasn't just the right of way, it was also along roads and along, you know, secondary power lines and whatnot, not just transmission, the, the, the high transmission lines. But, um, you know, they, and, and they said to us, well, they have this process, you know, here's the, here's the herbicides that they're allowed to use under the state DP. The science is settled. If you have science questions, talk to the DP. We just do what we're told. And, um, you know, and and we follow all blah 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 blah. And the interesting thing is, when you look at that endangered species uh, permit, they're talking about the violations having occurred in 2017 and 2018, which were the years that they were coming in saying you know, we do everything just by the book. You know, nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. Um, 
et cetera. And so, uh, you know, the person, I, rem I don't remember specifically that person, but I remember them being earnest and, you know, that I didn't think that they were coming there, you know, like an evil deceiver or whatever. It was just one side of that company didn't know what the other side was doing. So. No, they do come before the Conservation Commission and, you know, they go over all of the high tension lines and right now they're in the process of replacing all the towers all the way from where the high tension lines are going over the Shelburne Falls Road uh, uh, all the way to Bill Cosby's house and then right. continuing on from there. But that's, you know, that's the end in John Holy's house in Conway. Yeah, well, that's where that's where the uh, zero point six acres is missing from. <laughs> yeah, right. The uh, yeah, yeah. So, I, all right. Um, send a letter and see what we yeah. see what yeah. we clear up. I, you know, we can also. I don't know. You would send it to uh, Chris Larrabee at the recorder or whatever. Something. Yeah. This, because this is something that last time when this came around, we got so many letters about and. So many people from other towns were very concerned about all this too. And this is another one where they're just going from west to east in, the, in our county. And, you know, so they're, they're, they're doing Ashfield before us. Um, that, you know, so, all right. So that sounds like, do we need a motion for that? I guess so. So you, you want to state a motion or? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make a motion to send the letter that was drafted to Eversource in response to their letter of December 27th. I second that. All right. Aye. Favor, aye. All right. Items not anticipated 48 hours. Do you have anything for Ronnie? No, town administrator update. Um. Yes, okay. So I just wanted to let you know that we um, we applied for and have been granted a cybersecurity grant from the Executive Office of Technology Services and Security, and it's a municipal cybersecurity awareness grant, which will be self-paced um, cybersecurity training sessions for all town employees this year. It's actually going to start very shortly. Um, and then the grammar school is going to be joining us. Originally, I just applied for the town, but I was speaking with um, Kristen. So the grammar school is going to be doing it as well. And they're going to be able to do their own sort of self-paced, um, accelerated version so they can get it done by the end of this academic year. Uh, I have... Can I ask you a question about that, Bernie? Yeah, just, sure. Uh, I hate interrupting you in oh, the middle no, no, of the no. <laughs> update. Um, I, I'm wondering about the idea of it being all the town employees. I mean, I'm really wondering if it should be everybody who has a town of Conway email address. Yes, that's the that's the plan. I mean, it, I, I think we also need to recognize that there are employees who don't have necessarily a town email address, but might have access somehow to the system. And I need to learn more about exactly how this training is going to happen. But I definitely would like it to be everybody, at least at the very least, everybody who has a town um, email address. For sure, and you know, of course, there's also kind of the 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 um, they're going to have at the end of this training, they're going to do some fishing exercises for us, which we're also going to get through the fur cog um, from those. So you know, I, it, it's definitely this is definitely high on my list of things to to try to accomplish this year is to figure out how to keep this as secure as possible for as little money as possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but. So was that your concern about it being just just town? Yes, if it was just town employees. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm not a town employee, but I have a, an email address like all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's our, the way we handle our email addresses, which is the way people get into our system. Yes, yes, agree. I think actually every person on every committee is a town employee under the law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and, and most of them don't have town of Conway email addresses. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 And most of them don't have access to, you know, um, the system in any way um, other than that. So, okay. Um, I've also ordered um, the ARPA working group had approved spending money to order 180 rapid COVID tests. 
to the state contract. By the time I was able to order them, the only they didn't have single packs available. They only had two packs. So I got a case, which is 90 of the two packs. Um, we're going to be providing them to all of our EMS services, so fire, police, and ambulance for them to keep with them or have in their offices, however they want them. Also, the Board of Health. Um, and I had just heard from the Board of Health that they've been asking how other towns had been distributing these. And um, the, one of the first priorities was for homebound residents. So um, I've asked the Board of Health to let me know how many they would, they would want to have on hand for, for homebound people. Um, and as of this afternoon, uh, Jackie Choate from the Board of Health has three Moderna booster shots left um, available to give out on Wednesday. So if anybody sees this by Wednesday, um, if you'd like one, please contact the Board of Health right away. And just a quick COVID update, hot off the presses. I just got the COVID numbers and I thought I'd share them because we know the numbers have been going up. So for the week of December 20th through the 26th, we had 17 new cases. And then for the week of December 27th through January 2nd, we had eight new cases. So heading down and we're not, we're not nearly as bad as some others in the county. <laughs> so um, but I know it's, it's been a concern out there. So that's it for my update, thanks. So just, just so the, it was the select board last time around that voted for the, um, to do the test, right? I mean, the ARPA committee recommended it to the select board. Right. Yeah, sorry, yes, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, we but, did get that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. And actually, I'll, um, you know, we'll be asking potential because I've gotten now the new contract, the new state contract. The tests that I had ordered were, the, when I first looked at them, they were $6.25. Two days later, they were $8. But now I'm looking at a new state contract and the cheapest one is, which I think was the iHealth, is $5 per test. So ding, 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 we have a winner. Yeah. So if and and since that email went out to everybody in the state, I think if we want to order more tests to have on hand, then we should probably do it sooner rather than later before they run out or go up in price again. So we could bring that up next week if you want for an approval for. Yeah. For Sounds time. good. We should. Okay. We should. Otherwise, there won't be one left for me. <laughs> they periodically have them at Big Y or even CVS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, from what I've heard, those are like $12 a test. $12 a test, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So. Select board member comments or concerns. Anybody? Nope. Mail, we've dealt with that already. Any announcements? Next next meeting is next Monday. So special meeting next Monday. Great. Yes. And then we are, I don't know whether thereafter it's every Monday until Pretty June. much. So, well, yeah. So every Monday until June. Well, through through the end of, through the end of April for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But great. Yep. But if yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, with that, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Yes. All in favor. Right. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Nice Thank to you. see you. Yes. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Phil. Good night, Eric.